Question is from Prime and Glory. Is there a hierarchy when adjusting variables in your training? Should you start with changing reps before changing tempo or weight? Would this apply to beginners and advanced lifters? Oh, this is kind of a cool question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, you know, thinking about this, I would say hmm. the first thing you'd want to change, uh, definitely not the exercise. Um, here's a big mistake that I made as a, as a trainer early on. This is a big mistake I see a lot of trainers make when they design routines for their clients is they'll say, here's your workout for this week. Here's your workout for next week. Here's the workout for the week after. Radically different exercises. And, and that's because you think you got to make the workout super different and weird and exciting each time to keep the the person's interest. The problem with that is that they don't they, the client never builds the skill around the exercises to really reap the benefits. Like for example, when the first time you learn how to do a barbell squat, a lot of that initial learning process is just learning how to do it right. Once you kind of get yeah. to the point where you feel comfortable with the squat, then you can really start to reap the benefits. Well, that's why I think, yeah, like a tempo would be like my first sort of, uh, uh, you know, variable I'd change for a beginner. Like that would be something like that- Like slow down. Yes. Yeah, so you start slow and then you start like gradually increasing the speed with that like first and then we'll go to yeah. like reps. Re reps would be the next one. Yeah. Um, reps, you know, if you're doing a workout, let's say you're following a workout for three weeks and you want to change things up to get your body to respond again, change rep ranges. Maybe you're training in the eight to 12 rep range. Try going in the three to five rep range or the 15 to 20 rep range um, and stick with the same exercises. Master those exercises before you decide to switch up you know, the, the movements themselves. That's usually the last thing yeah. that I'd say. Now, to add, now what, what I want to add to that is that I 100% agree, especially when talking about beginners. When talking about an advanced lifter or how I do things personally now, because I've done all the exercises. I've done them at uh, all different tempos, at all different sets and reps, and I feel pretty comfortable doing anything, and I can get right into the groove of just about every exercise because I've done it so much. I actually like to kind of manipulate all at once because then I know I get the greatest ad adaptation and I get the greatest change from that. You know, if you if you manipulate one variable, you you are sending a a, a different signal to the body, so you'll get some change from that which is great and that's per and for a beginner that some change is, is going to be much mm -hmm. greater as you get more advanced and you've done all the tempo changing the sets the reps and all that stuff so many times over that the that change gets smaller and smaller but it still happens but it's smaller and smaller so now like when when i change something i change everything up a lot so a lot of times i go okay I'm transitioning over into a new program. I'm gonna not. I'm gonna change the exercises. I'm also gonna maybe go a little explosive. Uh, I'm. I, I'm gonna change the weight. I'm obviously gonna go lighter because I'm going on much. Ex I'm doing mm -hmm. explosive way training, and I'm gonna train that way for a while. And then I go, okay, what is the most drastic from explosive and lightweight in these movements? Okay, maybe something that's more f foundational, grinding and slow and heavy. Uh, that would be like the polar opposite. So I'm always trying to manipulate uh, many variables when you're because I'm advanced. Well, that makes sense because over time, you, you know, your body's going to be less responsive to these di like minor changes, right? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it's going to be very risk everything it's going to respond to. Right. So now to kind of like piece that together and sort of like if, if you were to then stack like two variables and then go to three and right. then go to the full yeah the full spectrum of variables to, to shift it makes a lot of sense if you've been in the game for a long time yeah, and now being advanced means you've been working out for a long time and you know your body and you know how to move in a variety of different exercises now most of you don't fall in this category most of you radically changing your workouts you probably want to keep it to maybe once a quarter so I'd say every three months or so, then you can radically change the exercise. So if you're following our programs, if let's say you're following the MAPS programs, well, that's roughly four MAPS programs or five MAPS programs a year, where you start off with one program, follow it all the way through. Our, you know, The programs tend to change the rep ranges. We'll change some of the exercises in there, maybe sometimes the tempo. But then after three months, it's a radically new exercise. It's a new pro. excuse me, a radically new exercises or new program. Um, that would be how I would design it for most people year round. But I think that the takeaway is that these are very, you don't want to get stuck in a variable, you know, uh, sequence for too long. Mm -hmm. Getting stuck in any program where it's the same reps, same sets, same exercises, same amount of weight, 
if you get stuck, your body won't budge. It's just going to, at the very least, you'll maintain. Uh, excuse me, at the very most, you'll maintain. Um, at the least, you may actually even go back a little bit. Sometimes switching up variables is what keeps you from regressing, especially as you get older and you reach your kind of genetic limit. Sometimes you got to switch it up so you don't start sliding backwards. And the opposite is true also. You don't want to be switching it up so much that you don't give your body a chance to adapt and get good at whatever the movements right. are. So there's that sweet spot. And obviously if you fall, and I know uh, I know Prime and Glory has, I think most of our programs. I he think does. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for you, if you've gone through all the MAPS programs, you know, you're, you're now starting to move closer to the advanced and you have more room to play with some of these things. But for most people, I would recommend that they go through all the because we do all this for you. That's the idea of the programs is we phase them for you. We manipulate reps. We manipulate tempo. We change the complete adaptation. So you're focusing on something totally different every quarter, like Sal is saying. So yeah, you once you've kind of gone through all of that once or twice and you've done that, like you can start playing with some things. Otherwise, we've kind of figured all that hierarchy out for you and we've implemented it into the programs. 